All right, getting testy on uh, tariffs and technology. This was actually uh, one of the best conversations we've been able to witness with the former president there. He and the editor-in-chief of Bloomberg, John Micklethwaite. Uh, Micklethwaite definitely holding his weight with the former uh, president, holding this town hall. And really, the conversation, um, if, if you sort of read between the lines, has given us a lot of information to why Trump favors you know, such huge uh, tariffs uh, going on to talk about uh, how it would create more factory jobs, uh, shrink the federal deficit, lower food prices, allow the government to subsidize child care. Uh, Micklethwaite definitely holding him accountable on a number of things, as uh, on a number of points, including economists and their estimates that tariffs would actually increase inflation, also cost the typical family about four grand a year. We also know that BP Harris uh, calls and continues to call uh, Trump's tariff proposal uh, uh, proposals, rather, a sales tax on the American people. Uh, now they're talking more about technology. Uh, would the former president break up Google, uh, ban TikTok? We'll continue to follow the conversation. Uh, and the economy, it's still, uh, voters love the former president when it comes to the economy. The polls show that, uh, and it's what the former president is really pushing and obviously trying to do within these town halls and interviews is focus on the economy, have these type of economic conversations, because bottom line, it works for them. We'll track it. We're three weeks until the election now. Vice President Kamala Harris, former President Donald Trump, they're feeling the pressure, too, as they're crisscrossing battleground states, making their final pushes to voters in these critical swing states. Harris is in Detroit on her media blitz, this time trying to convince black men to vote for her as she sits down for a radio interview with Charlemagne the God. Recent polling actually showing that Trump is about even with Harris among likely voters in Michigan. And then Trump is going to be holding a rally after he does this town hall. He'll be in Atlanta, where in-person early voters Voting officially begins in the Peach State. Joining me now, senior White House correspondent Selena Wang and senior reporter Catherine Falder. So, Selena, um, you know, as we're watching Trump take part in this economic conversation with Bloomberg, he has made a, no a number of comments also uh, about Vladimir Putin. I thought that was interesting. Uh, what were your thoughts? Yeah, he was directly asked about the reporting from Bob Woodward's book, which reported that Trump has spoken with Vladimir Putin as many as seven times since leaving office in 2021. Trump said he wouldn't comment on that, but said it would be a, quote, smart thing if he did. He also touted his personal relationship, which he called strong, with Putin, with China's Xi Jinping, as well as with North Korea's Kim Jong-un. He went on to praise Kim Jong-un, saying he has a nuclear force you won't believe. He said Russia has never had a president that they respect so much. So I wouldn't be surprised if the Harris campaign leader later seizes on those comments. But also, Kira, what we saw from this conversation is that Trump refused to give straightforward answers to very clear-cut questions, specifically around tariffs. And he gave very long and meandering answers, which he said was, quote, the weave, where he was trying to weave a lot of different topics together. What was clear is that he refuses to accept what the vast majority of economists agree on, which is that tariffs increase prices for consumers. He has repeatedly argued that tariffs are paid by foreign countries. That is just not the case. That is not borne out by the research, which shows that U.S. importers pay for those tariffs, then they pass it on to consumers. Research from economists have shown that his policies would increase inflation, would increase the federal deficit by trillions of dollars. Donald Trump not accepting those concerns. Catherine, did we get anywhere so far within this uh, conversation? <laughs> That's a good question, Kira. There was a lot uh, in that conversation, which obviously is ongoing. I, I do think, and I know Selena talked a little bit about this, but those Putin comments were really interesting, especially because the former president has previously denied that he had any conversations with Putin after leaving the White House. This time, he wasn't really denying it. He was actually saying it would be a smart thing if he had talked to Putin, of course, without confirming that he had. Um, so that's a bit of a change in tune here. Uh, look, he, he was asked about an, a number of, of, of different things of which he would give answers that weren't necessarily in response to the question. One thing that stuck out to me, Kira, 
uh, was with the Supreme Court, for example. He was actually asked about the Federal Reserve, but then he went into uh, this tangent about how he, uh, of course, appointed three of the Supreme Court justices now, three and four years. Uh, he kept saying, of course, that's a big uh, part of the conversation, especially as we talk about the issue uh, of abortion. And we still talk about uh, overturning Roe Ro v. Wade, who he would put on the court, for example, if he wins uh, the White House. So uh, I think the broader point here is, yes, it's, it's, it's a meandering conversation in, in a way. And as you noted, Kira, in the beginning, we haven't seen Trump uh, as much like this in these settings. Uh, but it does show, of course, how the economy is critical to this election, especially as Trump is leading in the polls there. Harris is catching up. But again, central focus these next 20 days. And Selena, why do you think Micklethwaite uh, was really pushing the question uh, about breaking up Google and trying to get the uh, former president to answer if he would break up Google or not? He also threw in the question about banning TikTok. Yeah, I mean, these are really important questions for a lot of people in the audience, for investors, for traders, for CEOs. They want to know where he's going to lie on these issues. We started to cut out when it came to the question of TikTok. We started to exit his conversation there. But TikTok is an issue that Donald Trump has flip-flopped on. He had originally wanted to try to ban TikTok during his administration. Then he later said that it shouldn't be banned. This is something that President Biden and Vice President Harris have made very clear, that this legislation that was signed into law by President Biden wouldn't be a ban, but that it it would be a forced sale so that the ownership would not be owned by a foreign country. So a lot of different issues that Micklethwaite was trying to get into there. But given the very meandering and long responses from Trump, he wasn't able to pin him down on a lot of specifics. Got it. And one more question, Catherine. Uh, a Georgia judge has now officially ruled a certification of election results uh, to be mandatory. A pretty significant ruling, right? The county officials must certify the election. What do you make of that? It is a significant ruling, Kira, and it says, of course, that county officials must certify the election, even in cases uh, where there is suspected fraud, if you will. It's not saying that they should certify it if they don't think so. But the point here is that, uh, of course, over the past four years, but especially now, conservatives in these battleground states uh, have been pushing for broader authorities over the elections, particularly in Georgia, which is a big uh, battleground state, of course. That's a critical state to the election. So it is a blow for conservatives in their uh, overall efforts in the state in particular. I don't think this is the last that you will hear about this. There's still, of course, outstanding uh, challenges of, of various degrees as well. All right, Catherine, Selena, thank you both. Appreciate it.